Hey, hey, welcome to Film Fanatics. My name is Dan. My name is Justin. And I'm Joe. This week, Jesus Rises, Jesse Owens Breaks Some Records, A Puritan Family May Include a Witch, <laughs> and Bat Kid Has His Day. First up, we start with Risen, and this is a biblical epic film written and co-directed by Kevin Reynolds, in which Clavius, played by Joseph Fiennes, is charged by Pontius Pilate, played by Peter Firth, to find Jesus' body following his alleged resurrection to stop an imminent uprising in Jerusalem. Tom Felton, of Harry Potter fame, co-stars as Lucius. And not evil this time. Actually, this is the first time we've ever seen him not evil. He wasn't in, like... in Bell, he was evil. He's like a decent person in this movie. <laughs> Every time he shows up, he's very evil, and you're right on that, Joe. Uh, so that was nice to see. Something different from Something him. Instead different. of being like an evil Roman guy like you're expecting. True. But in that vein, I, I sort of feel like this movie tries to be a little bit different from the original story while still being faithful to it. No pun intended. Huh. Um, but I think that that puts it ahead of other Christian movies that stick to the same tropes or like a straight up dramatic retelling. Um, you know, and not that this was that recent but the the um exodus gods and kings same story it was the same story except you know they took out of course the the best parts yeah actually they <laughs> for did some skip reason out some story bit. kind yeah. of odd but yeah. um but in that regard I, I feel like risen tends not to get too preachy uh, especially with the character of clavius at the helm sort of questioning everything uh, i think it tackles interesting subject matter but in that whole vein of trying to please everyone it also turns out a pretty safe, slightly watered-down version of the material. Now, personally, I would prefer a more modern-day Christian story as opposed to another biblical story, but I do think it did an okay enough job for what it is. The performances are decent. I mean, nobody, like, blew me away, but... Oh, this is pretty good. Fines was normal fines. Felton doing something a little different. <laughs> the performance was all right. W- what did you guys think, Justin? You're you're the most vocal critic of the Christian movies. Something different. I for wouldn't you. say yeah. I wouldn't say this is like a God's not dead. No. But what did you think of Risen? No, I mean I, I understand Dan that uh, obviously being the harsher critic of that. Personally, I I agree with you. I don't think it's overly preachy. My biggest issue is just the characters in this movie are so monumentally flat. It's like the uh, the writers thought, okay, we've got to tell another Jesus story. How can we try and take this in a, new, in a new direction? We'll focus on a Roman soldier, which would be great if there was anything about Clavius that was even remotely interesting. There just isn't. All right. Well, I, I'm sort of glad you said that because, like I said, for me, this isn't really my kind of thing. I would prefer just, hey, let's love the Lord rather than this. Mm-hmm. So I just thought oh well i don't really like these types of settings so but maybe i was also in tune with how flat the the performances were or the characters i should say joe um, did you find that i like clavius okay i mean i i, I think, thought he was the best of the bunch i mean um as a main character i think you're right he's not necessarily the most fascinating but we There's understand something him. interesting about him but I could get behind him. I mean, I could, I could root for him. I thought that I liked his goals. I liked his doubts. Um, I thought there, he was interesting as a conduit for the audience. I thought I thought he was okay. He certainly was a character that I could understand. And I, I thought he was relatable. I thought the setting was good. I liked the more historical context for the story. It's, it's always interesting trying to look at it from a, a, a more critical point of view, from obviously a completely different perspective. It's always nice. Um, I think that the thing that dragged this one down, though, is that uh, for an epic story, of course, I think you felt the production value a little bit. Uh, some of the editing... Oh, in some, spot, in some spots, definitely. Uh, you know, like, the you know, costuming was like, okay, the editing was a little choppy. I, I don't I don't like the fact that a lot of these um, Christian movies that take place during the biblical era, they always have, like, that that uh, tone that looks slightly off. It's like grainy, it's like a, almost. like a grainy yellowish orange, mm-hmm. and I'm just like, it always makes it look so... We get it. You want to be Ten Commandments. You're it, not. Uh, but the thing is, uh, I don't know, For even for Ten Commandments, I mean, I think that might have been like, what, Technicolor or something? I mean, it looked... More, oh, definitely, it, yeah. It, like, the, the color palette looked great. With this one, it just makes everything look gray and dull, mm-hmm. and I just hate when they're shot like that. So you're watching, you're kind of like... You almost don't want to view it because it just looks so ugly. So in that sense, I'm not sure if I liked the presentation, but I thought the story flowed pretty well. I mean, altogether, I thought it was decent. It's just that it didn't dive as deep as it could have thematically and or stylistically. And you guys are right. 
the characters were mostly pretty flat, but I don't know, I think our main character was solid enough to hold the story together. Mm -hmm. The one positive thing I did like is they didn't create this gigantic shift in the main character, which was which is one thing that sort of like held me with that. The other big issue I, I would say though along those lines is nothing really got my attention for about I'd say two thirds of this movie. Once we start getting into the followers, it kind of picks up a little bit, but just sort of like the I'm interrogating follower A who is clearly gleefully uh, a proud follower of Jesus is just it felt cartoonish. Well, you see, it's interesting you say that because I really liked that aspect that it was investigative and you're learning about the different disciples. It felt stuff. like CSI no, Jesus. I was going to say, you're a Law and Order fan. <laughs> That's true. I, I like the legal dramas and I like the uh -huh. the police stuff. Uh, police shows, you're right. But so, yeah, for me, this guy conducting an investigation of like the so apostles. So you're okay with CSI Jesus? I am. I mean, it's different and it's something that kind of kind of makes sense. Like, let's look at this person. Oh, this is how this Roman soldier is going to view uh, you know Peter. Okay, this is how they're going to view M Mary. Like, okay, this is this is Joseph Arimathea. I'm like, okay, that, they're not all. Some of them were cartoony, but I thought the fact that they all had their individual personalities was enough. Mm -hmm. I thought that was cool. Like, you rarely get to see well, these people as people. I certainly thought it was interesting that for a movie about Jesus, he's, he's not never, really in it. Which <laughs> is going to say, but, yeah, but that's, like five scenes. Yeah, I think that's interesting though. And to be fair, I mean, it's not the first time we see movies do that. Some of the best ones, I mean. I know you guys haven't seen it, but Ben Hur, one of the well, you have seen it. Yeah. One of the great Jesus movies. Jesus is only in it for what two scenes, technically, um, kind of, yeah, barely. Ish. Yeah. Ish. Hey, so, we just missed that on the Oscar A to Z, by the way. Yeah, no, we probably stopped about three weeks shy of Ben Hur. Well, I'll just have to figure out a way to promote it sometime because we talked about it for so long yeah, off air. We'll true. Have, to, have to watch it. True. Just set aside a day. Yeah, well, <laughs> our schedules. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right, well, for me, uh, Risen skates by with a C+. Plus. Justin? C. C+. Plus. Okay. Uh, well, up next is Race. Justin, let's hear about that. Stephen James plays Jesse Owens, a track athlete who eventually drew enough attention to go to the Olympic Games in Germany. Dealing with prejudice from every angle, Jesse must decide to face his adversity head-on or choose to step away from it all. Jason Sudeikis, in his first dramatic role, also stars. Although clearly meant to be a vehicle for John Boyega, who was uh, originally meant to be in this, but chose to... I was going to say, that was John Boyega? Okay, so it was supposed to be John Boyega, It was supposed to be John Boyega, but, it was but, to be okay. John Boyega, but he, he took say, off for uh, Star Wars. Him. Which okay. makes sense. Makes sense. <laughs> James James definitely rises to the occasion as, as Owens. I, I wasn't quite sure how this was going to play out. I figured it was either going to be charismatic or just shoddy. And to be honest, he does he does pull it off. It's not it's not perfect. It's definitely not Chadwick Boseman in forty two, but he's not bad either. the The standout for me was definitely more along the lines of Sudeikis, who I have always thought has been a much better supporting actor. I'm sure. Yeah, you're not a huge fan. Well, here's here's the thing about that statement, though. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of Sudeikis, but I really do like him when he's more of a supporting character. Like my favorite Sudeikis appearance is. In the first season of Thirty Rock, when he shows up as Tina Fey's love interest for a couple episodes, mm. and he does a really good job. He's really funny and he's really interesting. But really, where race falls apart outside of the ridiculously overlong running time is, I think it sort of goes through the motions of sort of the standard true story biopic playbook: must have ra random subplot, must have montage, must must have clip show, and alongside that way way too much going on in this movie and because of that i feel like it really makes what could have been a great story about a person who i think really does deserve a movie and i'm shocked it took this long to to get it out there but i believe there already is a jesse owens movie there was it may have been made for tv but there is i believe already a movie about jesse owens it's already kind of sad we don't know that i think well, I think it was a while ago. I, mean, I, know, I, just, I, I may just, not have even been but, in my lifetime. But, I just think the, they did already do a Jesse but, Owens movie, I mean, to be fair. I'm, I'm not going to deny that. But I don't know. What do you, what do you guys think about the uh, the storylines? Honestly, uh, I'm pretty much in agreement with you on this one, Justin. I think that it does kind of follow along that same... I don't want to I don't want to demean it. Obviously, there, there's a lot of stuff historically that we can look at. But as far as the whole you know, sports hero being this person who is meant to elevate the whole race relations issue of the time i feel like we've seen many movies you know tell similar stories and just do it better 
That's not to say that the core story is necessarily bad. I just wish they would focus on it. It's almost like they thought that there wasn't enough there to hold the audience's interest with a man whose primary talent was running. That was one of my problems with it. I think it it is really kind of all over the place in that regard. And, Mm -hmm. you know, expanding on that, personally, if it was going to be a sports movie at the center with the racial stuff as a big component of it, I'm fine with that, but then let's have some more training. But wait, Joe, we also have the Olympic conspiracy subplot that was completely unnecessary. And I'm glad you guys have brought that up, because in addition to the whole Olympic conspiracy plot... And the, the filmmaker who worked for, <laughs> the filmmaker. for Goebbels and the fact that Goebbels was like presented as the main villain and he's just kind of there. And then you've got uh, Jeremy Irons, you know, sports club controversy. I mean, you know, just <laughs> the, the thing is, I feel like there was a lot of interesting historical stuff in this movie, which individually I liked them all. But if you take them all separately, they're about like 10 minutes of a completely different movie. Basically. I mean, it's like they wanted to capture the atmosphere, which I think they kind of did. But we've got so many stories jumping around that are all pretty decent for what they are, but they're just not fleshed out enough. And then meanwhile, we have what the movie's supposed to be about, which is Jesse Owens, but it feels like only half the movie is really about him and his struggle. I would agree with that. I think the strongest stuff is sort of what was already tackled in 42. Yeah. The, he's great at his sport, he's going to break some barriers, and then there's race relations. It's the same movie. The the Hitler stuff, I liked, and I kind of would have liked to see more of that, maybe, because I thought that was interesting, but that's more of a 1936 Olympics movie Which would be cool. than it is a Jesse Owens biopic. And you feel Precisely. like if you, would you know, reverse the movie focusing on the 1936 Olympic Games and make this big epic historical movie about that and have maybe Jesse Owens come in as a part of it as one of the right. minor characters right. in the background, but like learning about the, the balance between the sports uh, group over mm-hmm. in the U.S. and trying to resist versus the people working together to produce the yeah. film and everything. I mean, Goebbels, the guy that played him, and, you know, obviously he was a pretty low-speaking role, but he certainly was pulled yeah. off this evil, one of the most evil and Jeremy people. Jeremy Irons was history, great. Of course. As the uh, Olympic Committee and chairman. William Hurt was still asleep, so everything was yeah, consistent. Yeah, true. <laughs> I really don't want to be in this movie. I mean, I don't want to participate in this. Um, <laughs> in the game. I'm sorry. I, yeah, whatever. I had credibility. I used to... You know, all right, I I know this is, I don't want to get too off track with Mm -hmm. this, but William Hurt. Stop acting? He's. I I think his time has come. He's done, (laughs) he's done the same role. I know, for like 40 years. Where he plays the slightly stoic, and I can't tell whether he's like acting or he's just bored in every movie he's in. He's always asleep. (laughs) Yeah, he he was the worst part of this movie. Uh, But I I will speak to Justin's point on Sudeikis. Now, I'm a fan. I think he's really funny in some of his movies i thought he was great here i really thought he turned in a surprisingly good dramatic performance no i mean you could definitely tell he was trying to like change his typical inflection to like really commit to the role which i honestly did appreciate yeah it's it's still a kind of variation of the typical sudeikis persona but here's kind of what it reminded me of go on and obviously this person is a much more overall talented actor go on but it reminded me of sort of like a Robert Downey Jr.-ish take on a dramatic, but still you have to be kind of sarcastic role. Like, he is still it. being a little bit of a Jason Sudeikis. Yeah. But he was forceful when he had to be, and he was yelling at people when they were down on Jesse mm-hmm. and whatever. But he still had, like, some smart ass to him. I don't know, it just sort of reminded me of that. No, I, I can see where you're coming from, like, that, that sort of dry wit here and there. Mm-hmm. When I first saw the race trailer and saw Jason Sudeikis, I was like, okay, were the Millers gone by? <laughs> I thought it was oh, very yeah. weird, yeah. <laughs> Strange. <laughs> what is choice. he doing in this movie? Mm-hmm. But, uh, but no. We're the racers. <laughs> we're the Owens. <laughs> we're the Owens. <laughs> we are all gem. Oh, man. <laughs> Make it stop. We are. <laughs> <laughs> I can't deny it. We are all gem. Uh, Continue. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It's pretty funny. But uh, no, he, he definitely makes it work, and I think... Even though some of the dialogue between them is horrible and you can clearly tell it's whoever's been putting together the script going, hey, look at how we're clever. Oh, call back to an earlier thing. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I didn't think the script was that corny. It was oh, a little, little corny. Was it a little corny? Some of the, the standard, like, you know, up. Why didn't stuff. you tell me you had a kid? You didn't ask. I know. And then they bring it back later. Listen, by the way, the love story stuff was the worst 
beyond forced. I just didn't... I mean, I right. get that that happened in his life and he had this woman, but, like, I cared about the race and I cared about the Olympics. I didn't honestly care that much about his personal life because it wasn't very interesting. Well, he had a wife and a kid. I got it. Who we see for, like, one scene. <laughs> but they don't... And we're I don't supposed even, to care about when yeah, he has to cheat on her. I don't know if they need to be in the movie. I, I don't know. They probably didn't because they spent so little time with it. Like, with 42, Jackie Robinson, you know, was living with the... You know, here, most of the movie takes place in Germany, so it's like she's not really around. Yeah. Jackie Robinson and his wife moved around with the teams, and she was obviously a much bigger part of his story. Well, Dan, if they didn't have that whole component, they couldn't have the callback, the cute little callback. I know. See, that whole big line. But do we need the <laughs> adorable callback? Is a sick question. <laughs> I mean, hey, I saw it with uh, my mom, and she loved loved it all that stuff so yeah. you know i mean i think I that guess it works for some if you're going for that sort of nostalgic sentimentality which it's going for mm-hmm. i could see it hitting the right chords with some people like i mean it made me laugh sometimes i i did like the script i thought it was okay um i didn't think their exchanges were too ridiculous no just i would standard. say standard i was gonna say like overly Overly noticeable attempts at trying to be clever on the on the writer's part. Like it's mm. too early for Oscars, guys. Did you did you think it was uh, too long, Joe? Like Justin mentioned, because I didn't. I didn't find the length of it that no crazy. I, I actually don't well, remember looking to speak more to that all. point. I mean, it's a little over two hours. It's probably two ten or something. I didn't really notice actually. Yeah. No, the first half I thought it was actually really well paced. When we actually like start focusing on these point in the subplots, I thought it dragged all over the place. Mm. Like, when we first started introducing, like, the weird conspiracy thing, which is just completely and utterly forced in. Then you have the filmmaker subplot, which even drags it on even longer. Then you have the whole Owens women on, woman on the side, who has literally two scenes, and then you never hear from her again. Well, because he felt bad about doing it. So yeah. Was she just... was she, Her story was done, Justin. I, I get that. We didn't but... really need her to be in the rest of the movie well, cheering him on. Resolved. I get that, but still, tacked on side plot. Uh, See, a lot of the yeah, but on. I mean, it did happen. I, I guess my biggest problem with the, I guess, pacing, if, if you want to say it, or structure maybe is more correct. Okay, we'll go that right. Is that, like I mentioned, I, I feel like some of this stuff belonged more, like the camera woman subplot that you mentioned. Mm-hmm. I think some of this stuff belonged more in a Berlin Olympics movie rather than a Jesse Owens movie. And I would have been okay with that. And I think they were interesting. I would have been okay with it too. I, I thought they were interesting plots and ideas. But it didn't always necessarily have yeah. to do with him. No. Uh, all right. Well, I actually was was going to give this a B, but Uh-oh. after our discussion, I, I it is a little bit frantic. I'll, I'll give it a B minus. Justin? B minus. Well, lo and behold, B minus. Hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, well, Joe, let's hear about The Witch. Or, or... The Vavitch. You know, As it's it funny. is stylized on the uh, poster. It, it wasn't until I looked over the synopsis on Wikipedia that I even realized that. The Witch is obviously a horror film written directed by Robert Eggers in his uh, directorial debut. It was super independent, and you could tell right away because this movie can't even afford soundtracks. Mm-mm. I mean, it's just it's just so Quite minimal, so minimalistic, which is something I liked about it. Uh, but the plot follows a Puritan family encountering the forces of evil in the woods beyond their New England farm after they've been eh, kind of pushed out for some reasons that are sort of left as a mystery. And I, I really felt like if you were going to try to <laughs> put put a uh, uh, Hawthorne short story and make it a horror movie. And this is basically what it would be. I'm just thinking. It was funny before I went in. Uh, we, I was talking with Peter, who was a guest on our show, about uh, like this. Just seems kind of like Young Goodman Brown to me. I came up like, yeah, it's Young Goodman Brown. Hmm. <laughs> it's it's basically the same thing. And uh, I I kind of this one thing about it I thought was very interesting. And I will say this much. I I think pretty much everybody else in the theater I saw it with hated it because i think that if you're going into this movie with standard conventions of what a horror movie is i think you might be disappointed because it's a different type of horror uh one thing i liked about it was that in, though it's incredibly low budget i actually did feel that it created a great sense of these people basically being left out in the wilderness they did seem kind of secluded i thought that it was actually shot pretty well there was some good cinematography most of the costuming was good except this uh, the boy, the oldest son, has a hat that is obviously a modern hat, which bothered me. Uh, that really bugged me. <laughs> Did you guys notice the that? The person I saw it with noticed. I just sort of chalked it up to maybe they 
uh-huh. knitted it themselves in that style. Okay, they pulled the village. But yeah, I, I uh, like everybody's yeah. costume is fine. It's a little much. That kid, I'm like, that's obviously like a, just a modern <laughs> right. hat that you just got at like the Hot Topic or something. Mm-hmm. I'm like, that's that's painfully obvious. So there were little things like that that kind of stuck out. Um, some things about it were kind of uneven. Like some of the acting was really good. And they stuck to a, a language that was like of Shakespearean of the time. So like around 1600, which I really appreciated, mm-hmm. added this genuine uh, reality to it that I actually enjoyed. But And like I said, some of the actors did a great job, like particularly the, the two um, male leads, the mother and father. Uh, but the son, uh, he was mm-hmm. yeah, he was pretty bad. Uh, but then again, he was kind of over the top with some of the stuff. So I was like, yeah, I, I guess. And then the girl was kind of uneven. The little kids were creepy and <laughs> annoying as horror kids usually are so i thought that was acceptable uh, unfortunately there are parts of the movie where i think it's so minimalist and it takes its time uh, with some of these long shots it does kind of get boring there, there are some pacing issues there uh, but balancing out with some of the atmosphere it was also kind of uneven and uh i will say though uh, <laughs> the biggest problem is that some, the movie is creepy a lot of the time but most of the time it isn't really scary mm. Except for the few times when it's really, really scary. So, for me, this one was a very mixed bag. But I'm curious to see what you guys think. Well, I'm really glad to hear you say that because, you know, I don't, like, look at the reviews, but I will always check the tomato score. Pretty fresh. Because it, it and it's like, it's getting all these great reviews but, and it's like 80-some percent. Rem- remember, Dan, check the popcorn. Always check the popcorn. Well, that's true. Significantly less. That's true. And, I, and I've I've read that when I read how well it did uh, opening weekend. I also read Critics that, love it. that audiences, audiences hated it. Not. And I was like, okay, I'm I'm definitely like What's more up? on one end of this because, uh-huh. I, I mean, it's it's okay. There's some good things. I agree, Joe. But there's, there's going at a slow pace to build tension and then there's just drags, boring. Drags a little bit. This movie was boring for like the first hour well, it's only an hour and a half. Maybe the first half, let's say. There are pieces, um, yeah. You know, and then uh, it got real interesting. Like you said, there's a couple of, like, real scary things happening. But... Is it quite enough? It's not quite enough. Justin, in terms of, of that issue, how did you feel about that? I feel like it's a movie that just sort of had the misfortune of coming in, coming into this world at the wrong point in time. Like, if this came out in the 70s or even the 80s, I think most more people would have been okay with it. So, yeah, 70s for sure. It feels like a but, 70s horror. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, in, in today where, let's jump, be jump honest, scare, jump scare, it's jump scare. jump scare, jump scare. And I didn't mind, obviously, that there were no jump scares. I hate them. No, 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 but, no. You the, know. the scares that this movie actually does have, the few of them, were really good. Yeah. But there's like three of them. Well, <laughs> let, let me speak a bit more to that, Joe. Okay. Here's how I sort of broke it down. Okay. It starts, obviously, it's a standard hard buildup. You're not going to start off with, like, your most interesting stuff first. Yeah. You have your first chunk of detail, which is sort of your first act. First act ends on a spooky note. Then we get to act two, which is also do- done sort of episodically. Act two ends on a spooky note. Mm. Act three decides to get more intense because it's a horror film. Gotta get intense, yeah. Also ends on a really spooky note. End of movie. Yeah. So you have three really spooky scenes. That's about it. But the rest of it is very, very character-driven, very atmospheric. And that's fine if you're for, psych- for a psychological thriller. As a horror film... It's not that scary. Which... Yeah, see, I wouldn't... I would not personally refer to this as a horror film. I think it's more of a... I'd go psychological thriller. Dr- yeah, dramatic thriller, psychological thriller. Eh, it certainly has horror let's, elements. Let's, I, let, it's, like a, it's like a dark fantasy or a supernatural drama, if, if you okay, want to get creative. Okay, there you go. Like I can agree with that. There's, there's horror elements. Or even supernatural thriller, I would accept. Yeah. Yeah, well, the thing is, there, I mean, there are some things that do fit very categorically into horror. I mean, which... Demon, sure. devil. You're right. I mean, it's, You're right. It's, it's it's like saying Rosemary's Baby isn't probably like traditional horror movie, more of a thriller, but it's a horror. There's movie. horror elements. All right. It's, it's I enough, guess so, that's but true. It's, I, it's horror, but it's not traditional horror. But you're right. It's it's a horror film, very much in the same vein as Rosemary's Baby. It's more atmosphere. It's more character stuff. It's more tension. Mm-hmm. I mean, the but it, good comparison there. You've got Rosemary's Baby, where you really have the time to get to know the characters and what they're going through. This one. Not quite so much, yeah. unfortunately. In, in bits and pieces. Like, we learned some things about some of the characters, but a lot of it's left to up and, up to interpretation. I, I think it's also a think piece, though, because... It is. It's like it's one thing where, all right, obviously you might not say the scares are not as obvious, and even atmospherically, but if you want to look at it as a commentary on a period of history and a section about the fears generated based on people's perspectives and the whole idea of who is the witch, 
Uh, that's one reason why it actually did kind of work. The resolution, uh, even if you take out the supernatural elements, which I guess were there, uh, you could argue that it was kind of a product of the fear and the paranoia of the time in that area, well, which was pretty well done, I think. I love that time period. Mm-hmm. Just for me, fascinating I don't think you would have liked to have No, I, I don't want to live in it, but... But not that fun. I, I, I find the whole witch trial thing supremely and, fascinating. And I think it's, in this movie, that's so wish, genuine, though. I, it is, but I guess... I might have enjoyed it more if they sort of tackled that a little bit more. It, it's sort of, you I know... I think they did, though. Well, I in, mean, they... In a way. In a small way. Yeah. And yes, you know, the reason that they're there is related to that. But, I don't know. I guess make the family a little more interesting, then, if, if you're going to do it that way, or make something a little more interesting. I think the father was pretty interesting. The father was the best part of the movie, and God, that voice... He Man, just, was, when he opened him like, oh, whew, can this guy just narrate this movie? I know, seriously. That voice is just like, um, is this the devil already? Oh, no, it's just a normal that was, guy. <laughs> that was great. And I do agree, Joe. I think the language was really good. The accents I, were a little thick for my taste. They were thick, I but... I kind it, of have a mixed feeling. You didn't like that. it? They well, were difficult. Here's, here's subtitles, the thing. Subtitles, Justin. Subtitles. It's, n- it's not even the subtitles. It's... Okay, the adults, pretty consistent with Old English. The young girl who we focus on for the better por- part of the movie... Very consistent with Old English. The kids, who I have to give a lot of credit to, they are, they were incredibly consistent. Like I, I wasn't sure how they would how they would commit to this. They they go all the way. The problem is there are points where they try to do Old English and they jump right to New English and hope that you don't notice. And it's really awkward when it happens. Well, I didn't catch I mean, up too much. Personally. I, I I didn't notice it. I did notice that the boy wasn't a particularly good actor. He did suck. The I'm, the one scene where he's like screaming. I, like, I mean, well, it was a joke. So you're bad. <laughs> it was a, that was a joke of a scene. But that was probably the worst bit of acting. In the I whole know, movie. but it was supposed to be a really tense moment. It was kind of funny. And I just kind of thought, oh, ha ha ha! Like this is not <laughs> this this kid doesn't know what's going on. I thought the girl was okay. She was fine. You, yeah, you didn't the the older girl. You didn't. Say yeah. too many good things about. No, her. I, thought I thought she was. She was, all right. she was solid. I actually like the the older. Yeah, I thought she was fine. Girl. Yeah, she was. She was good. Uh, she's a good actress. Yeah, I just you know, it wasn't really about her until the end, but it really know. wasn't. But uh, you know, it's fine. It was kind of about like the whole idea of the time, I guess. True. Paranoia and all the other things associated with that. Like, like I said, the the build up was kind of an even, but for me, uh, the the twist, I guess, I thought was actually pretty clever and um, pretty pretty creepy. The personally. twist is is. I would say the best thing about the film, and that's that's kind of I thought that you was know. actually pretty awesome. Kind of made me want a little more, but uh, I I think it ended satisfactorily. All right. Uh, well, for me, the witch gets a C plus. Justin, B plus, B minus. And this was on your top five most anticipated, Joe. Yeah, we yeah. hit two of them so far, and not Hail Caesar. Obviously, was a huge disappointment. Well, Hail Caesar, I absolutely despised, yeah. but at least this one felt like had a finished story, kind of focused, kind of scared me a bit. It was a bit smart. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's it's not quite living up to the uh, hype so far. Yeah, I was I was real shocked that this was getting the accolades that it is critically. I, yeah. Uh, yeah. Although, speaking of Hail Caesar, the movie stinks. And I have dropped my grade. I think I gave it a C on the show. I couldn't believe that. It's a D+. Plus. Thank you. It's, it's bad. It's, it's not even a... It's barely a movie. It's barely a movie. It's barely an idea. Yeah. There's a couple good ideas in there. Somewhere. Somewhere. But they uh, didn't execute any of them. No. But obviously that's neither here nor there. We've <laughs> well, already done that show. Glad to hear but that. it stinks. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, finally, we will wrap up here with Bat Kid Begins. This is uh, currently on DVD and sort of kicks off, in a way, our DC month. We're doing these, uh, now that we're not doing you know old classics or the Oscar A to Z on our regular show anymore, uh, every month we're going to do a theme and then you know we will each bring one movie and that theme to the table we just did the oscar so white month and this is obviously for batman versus superman dc movies month uh which by the way there will be a listener's choice for so if you have any ideas for that uh let us know what you would like to uh, see us review so we do uh, bat kid begins here and this is basically a documentary about miles scott a young cancer survivor and the effort to make his make-a-wish to be Batman for the day a reality in San Francisco, or as it was turned into for the day, Gotham Gotham City. Now, I would say the worst part about this doc is how a lot of it is basically just a showcase for different corporations that helped out and make-a-wish itself, but it's literally impossible to tell the story without mentioning all of these things, so 
I kind of give it a pass for that. And then there's how incredibly, you know, sugary sweet it is. Mm, sweet. Which I also mostly give a pass to because I just, you know, not every movie has to be cynical and have this hardened edge to it. And you can have a movie where it's just people being nice and you feel bad for this kid and you're happy that he's healthy now and that he gets this day. And I, I cried a lot in this movie. I thought it was very touching. Uh, I thought it was this great testament to the human spirit and the humanity. And uh, I, I don't know. I, I really, really liked it. What did you guys think? Well, I think the story is great. I think the documentary is okay. Okay. So the execution, maybe not great. I mean, like, I liked the individual stories. And I, I liked, I agree. I think that just the idea that so many people got involved in making this uh, kid's dream come true was very awesome. And I definitely think there were some scenes that were very touching. It's true. Like, right off the bat, you liked the kid. And you, and it, it is a very great story uh, for humanity. It, it gives you hope. Uh, but did the documentary do anything that I thought was particularly stylistically great? Uh, not really. Okay. I just, you know, I think the based on the story itself, it definitely elevates it. But mm-hmm. uh, not the most fascinating documentary I've ever seen. How about for you, Justin? I mean, it's a great case of human kindness at its finest. But I mean, I think. I think you're right. It is it is fluffy, and I mean it's certainly not trying to be anything but mm, fluff. <laughs> but <laughs> I also kind of was hoping for more of more of an angle, more exposition instead of just okay, look at this kid who who had cancer. Let's give you the origin story of all this with a horrible, horrible comic book transition, which I will was confess, hideous. The the if they were going to incorporate the comic book aspect, make it look a little better, I know... That wasn't my favorite part. I know DC could cough up like some actual artists to do that for them. Or maybe they wouldn't, oh, they, because Warner Brothers doesn't really care. But yeah. How much did they well, the, help out? The movie wasn't made by Warner Brothers. See, that's it the thing. It was distributed by Warner They bought it at a film festival. Well... They still could have got a the, the couple point, solid artists to my, throw that out. My point is... I don't want to bash DC, but I'm like, come. I was gonna say, I I don't know really hear them mention too much. Like they should have helped out with this kid more. Than they didn't anybody. help out with anything. Great job, DC. Which they they, they really didn't. And that that just that just makes me mad in and of itself. But there you go. If they distributed, Literally, they could cough up that. President transition. Obama tweeted about it. I know. Yeah. They couldn't get. You know, I mean, for their somebody <laughs> their PR, they could have had. Couldn't they have like get one of their consult? They like when I found out that they had to like go and they order the costume, and then they they had to mm-hmm. tamper it themselves. Um, you don't think that maybe Warner Brothers Studios could cough up a, a costume maybe for you just for a donation for this? I mean, talk about getting people to buy your comics, show that you have some humanity. Where all these heroes are people that actually, you know. This is turning into a very negative a bash. thing. I know. No, no, see, no. this is my point with this movie. Mm. It doesn't have to go negative. Yes, Warner Brothers maybe could have stepped up or so could DC, but they didn't. So it's a movie about who did step up and here's what they did and here's how they made this. And yes. I don't know. And once again, I, I think the story was great and the people were great. I just think it was shot in a very standard <laughs> way, documentary-wise, that didn't really... Uh, I didn't really lot. feel like there was a talented filmmaker behind the camera. It was more like... Let's record what happened. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm I'm on the street corner watching this whole thing play out. And don't get me wrong, it's it's, it's cool. awesome to be to see all this front and center. And Miles is awesome as Bat-Kid. I'm sorry. When he's strutting down the street in the full Batman yeah, get-up, he gets into puts it. Christian Bale to shame. So I'm going to say it. No, he, he gets into it and they make a comment about him turning into John Wayne. You know, I mean, no, like, no, I mean, yeah. like I said, the people were great. The story is great. I'm glad I saw it. I think it, it was a well-made documentary. It's good, but I just think that if we're looking at it has a documentary feature, we got, we can we have our transition, which was bad at the beginning for the origin story. We've got interview. We've got shots of what happened. Interview shots of what happened. Then they also try to ex- <laughs> try to explore on the cynical aspect of it. They literally just shrug it off by saying, look, rich people paid for this, so it's okay. Oh, at the end of that, yeah, yeah. Well, what's wrong with mentioning that? Because it's like, okay, yes, there are critics of this, but don't worry, rich people paid for it all. That's great. Well, that doesn't really answer any of the all criticisms. Right. It does. She said that the criticisms were that they were spending the city's money to do this. Well, guess what? They didn't. It got paid for. People volunteered and they flew out, and, and that's a great that thing. That was the criticism she mentioned, Justin. There were more than that, but... Uh, that she mentioned? 
That you mentioned, no, but I'm saying, okay, okay you're you're still underplaying the the more cynical side to this. Like, there were more criticisms just, than just simply, oh, you're using the city's money. Such as what? What the funding for this actually could have covered instead of turning one gigantic publicity stunt, a.k.a. corporations do good. Well, I had some cynicism for it, but this was kind of a positive cynicism, but I was kind of thinking to myself, okay, one reason why this is happening, which is good, is because and people lining up and cheering the kid on is because it's in San Francisco, which from what I understand is basically the nicest place on the planet. Everyone loves. So San I'm Francisco. like, okay, that's great, but it's San Francisco. They would have done this anyway. <laughs> Secondly, I'm thinking it's great. It's so great that this kid gets to have his dream fulfilled. What about every other kid that has leukemia? Exactly. And that kind of made me feel like, well, well, that's why Make a Wish exists. They do. Obviously, they don't do this for every kid, but they didn't expect this to be what it was. That's the point. <laughs> they, she thought there might be 200 people that showed up. And helped out. And I, but I'm I'm just trying to think to myself, why did that happen? Is it because it's Batman related? I, I don't know. Uh, possibly. Is it the idea maybe that's part of it. I think it's because social media is such that that happens. I mean, the the most requested Make a Wish people mm-hmm. are wrestlers. WWE gets tons mm-hmm. of Make a Wish. True. Right. Well, people like you know your John Cena's and whoever else. I mean, they do hundreds mm. of appearances at hospitals and, and whatever. And it doesn't get talked about because... Standard? They don't like to toot their own horns, maybe, or because it's standard or whatever. I know some musicians do it sometimes. Musicians do it. Christian Bale did it, you know, for, for people. Yeah, I know. Um, I just I mean, feel like this one got so much attention, it does kind of make me question it a little bit. Not that I'm trying to be too cynical. I, I think it was a great thing, but there is, no, I mean, there is kind of this undercurrent of it that... I did find a little... It's definitely an uplifting story. It's just there are some there are some negative aspects of it that well, I think it does underplay. Justin, to be fair, though, in their own documentary, don't you think they're going to underplay it if they want to upsell the, the positive nature of the story, though? I mean, yeah, okay, maybe it's not fair, but, you know, that's like saying, you know, going clear, going to promote the positive aspects of Scientology as much. I mean, there might not be as many, but... To be fair, if you have an agenda, you're going to lean much more one way. I don't know. I mean, I guess the point is this is what Make-A-Wish does. This particular case got super hey, more involved than it ever was supposed to be. If I made me more... I, because of people, I, not because of Make-A-Wish itself. I'm glad. I think you know? I think it gives good promotion for Make-A-Wish. I think it does, too. You know, I mean, that, no, really, really does work. And I think that it's a, a great organization that uh, should be bigger, honestly. I think there should be more things like it in our society you know so no it's it's hopeful I'm, I'm glad i am glad i think it was good i just think you know like i said the portrayal the production of the documentary well i give back kid begins an a minus justin b b plus hmm. there so, see it wasn't that crazy i mean like you know no but you know cynical justin over there it's got to be the b of course but a b is good be a solid yeah, b is all right it's it's okay joe dan thinks b plus equals bad so Depends on the movie. Well, if it's Captain Phillips, that was I think a B. it does equal uh, Then B would be worse than B. <laughs> well, Big Short, did you give that a B plus? Yes, actually. Oh. <laughs> well, then there you go. Oh. Too high, I would say. All right. Well, anyway, that is going to do it for uh, this show. We have a ton of minisodes up that you guys can check out. We've got the Oscars So White minisode up. We've got the Best of the Year redo up. Um, the directors that maybe should not have won Best Director at the Oscars. That is up. Uh, and, of course, all of our Star Trek videos as well. So tons of things happening. Uh, you can subscribe, of course, and you can also check us out on Facebook at Film Fanatics with an exclamation point and the Twitter feed at Film Fanatics Pod. Our five-word reviews there are posted weekly as well. And uh, that will do it for this show. So thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you back here next time.